good folks. Today I have a superstar to present, Mr. Chow Stalin, one of the most famous son of this beautiful town, Shubri. As a child, my grandmother once took me to the Natural History Museum and introduced the revolutionary thinker Charles Darwin, who took a grand voyage to South America in the 19th century. The panorama pictures from Galapagos occupied my juvenile fantasies for a long time. The idea of adventure has ever since been connected with a cumbersome journey which is filled with excitement and fantastic discoveries. It's so exciting. We're on our way to the place where Charles Robert Darwin was born in the 19th century. Charles Darwin lived in a time when pursuing a career as a scientist was a rare idea in the common eyes. His grandfather was a wealthy medical doctor, one of the Lunar Society's most prominent members, Erasmus Darwin. As a child, he was very interested in insects, especially the beetles. Gradually, he collected a huge number of beetles, including a number of very unusual species. This wonderful Palladian villa was George Darwin's childhood mansion. How beautiful it really is! And his parents, Robert Darwin and Sarah Wedgwood, who was a daughter of the famous Josiah Wedgwood must enjoy a very nice life here. This is not open for the public today, but it still feels fantastic. Just wander around to admire each and every break, which built the dream of Charles Darwin's journey. As a child, Charles Darwin lived in an environment in which there was a noticeable spiritual dichotomy. Whilst the Wedgwood family belonged to the Anglican congregation, his father, the medical doctor Robert Darwin, was an outspoken free thinker who belonged to the Unitarian Church and was strongly influenced by the Enlightenment ideas. The idea of critical thinking was by all means equally important as any other biblical dogma at home. The baby Charles was baptized in the Anglican St. Charles Church in 1839. Nevertheless, every Sunday, he and his siblings followed his parents to attend the service in the Unitarian Chapel. Sadly, his mother passed away when he was only 8 years old due to an aggressive type of cancer. Darwin went to grammar school in this place until the age of 14 and the rooms in his old classroom are really high ceilings with beautiful arch windows on either end of the room. At the age of 9, Charles Darwin commenced his education in Shoebridge School an Anglican boarding school for young boys. The most important lessons were naturally Latin and Greek. As a young man, Mr. Darwin was considered as a slow learner and obtained a poor grade, which was likely caused by his lack of commitment. What kept him staying in the school was the chemistry lab, in which he and his older brother carried out a number of odoriferous experiments. The charm of Shubra's medieval town core upon the waterway is the very best trait of today. In summertime, the green colour has decorated this town with so much 
vigorance and energy. It just feels like we're floating from reality into a paradise. The river Severn forms a loop around the old town centre, in which there are a huge number of black and white timber dwellings. When boating along the waterway in a humid summer afternoon, we enjoyed the green public parks, which once gave Charles Darwin and his siblings much joy. Also cultivated his fervent interest in the highly diversified biological world. In his preteen period, and his brothers often enjoyed pony riding and fishing. In the nearby ponds, his father's interest in natural philosophy and the classification method influenced his view of the world. When out together, they enjoyed finding out the names of each plant they encountered in accordance with an elementary natural history book. Today, this town is still referred as the town of flowers. Due to the proliferation of those plants and flowers. Today we're dining in style in an old pub, which could have been opened already in Darwin's time, and this is definitely a local celebrity. Famous people like the Beatles once visited this pub and probably had their own paint. A beer. Charles Darwin was a gourmet who had also a serious scientific approach to eating. As a college student, he joined the gourmet club in Cambridge. The members met once a month and enjoyed a dish, which were often prepared with the strange flesh, which rarely appeared upon any menu in the ordinary taverns. Once he actually tasted a piece of a grilled brown owl. Which he found indescribable. After a few quick googling attempts, we found out that most people who have tasted owl in different ways would like to compare the great owl with the taste of an overmatured hen. In terms of both the taste and the texture, some tourists who have tasted the slowly cooked owl in New Zealand claim that. There is a strange resemblance between the taste of a wild crane and the flavor of thol. According to Darwin's own notes, through his voyage upon the Beagle along the South American coast, he loved to have a marbleless flesh for dinners. In his diary, he described the taste of a marbleless flesh as the tender taste of a young English dog. Upon another diary passage, there is a detailed narrative about a culinary experience: tasting a small rodent. He regarded the flesh of the rodent as the most tasty meat he ever tried. As a couple of architecture geeks, we also took some time to enjoy another Victorian treasure: an exuberant and elegant neo-Gothic edifice in the vicinity of the city wall. This lavish Catholic cathedral was designed by the iconic Catholic architect Augustus Welby Pugin, and like so many other Pugin's architect treasures, he wanted to enlighten people, to point out a way for them to be aware. Of the moral consensus in the society in which he would like to improve with his artistic skill and also the kind of idea which he think is both divine and temporal at the same time. The lavish and flamboyant interior is extremely impressive. When standing upon the beginning of the nave and gazing upon the elegant stained glasses, we were speechless. The artistic style witnessed both the ongoing art and craft movement, also an English idiosyncratic interpretation of divinity. 
all saints look up on a distant target. There is no obvious direct communication between two depicted divine figures, as if the idea of individuality should apply to everyone. Shubra is a perfect tourist destination for anyone who enjoys the historical atmosphere and is curious about Charles Darwin's life stories. Most attractions can be easily reached by foot from the city centre. The tourist information has an excellent description over all Charles Darwin-related sites.